Hello, my divine kings and queens. I'm back to do another video. Um, and before we get into these messages, I just want to let you guys know that I have created a personal vlog so that you guys can get a more um, in-depth view just of my life, personal things that I do, life events. Um, it's kind of slow right now. Uh, I'm going to post a couple of videos to end out 2021, but going into 2022, it's going to be full fledged. You guys going to have uh, front row seats to my graduation, vacations, all kinds of things, updates on my puppy. Um, and so if you guys want to see more of that and more of me on a personal level, outside of the messages I deliver to you guys, outside of the prophetic words, the inspiration, the motivation, you want to see more of your sister, make sure that you go ahead and check out that community board. I'll be frequently making sure that I go back and post a direct link, but the direct link is already on the community board and, uh, make sure that you click that link and you check out my channel. It's going to be titled the Bohemian Beauty and, um, Pretty much the couple of videos that I posted already, uh, you guys can go ahead and view that and make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And so now getting into these messages, um, a message that was coming to me is some of you guys had um, relationships, right? You had relationships, friendships, situationships, whatever the case may be that um, you were going through at a particular point in time in your life. And see, the thing is, these relationships uh, had a severe impact on your mental stability, on your mental health, as well as other things in other areas of your life, right? And so the reason why this had such an impact over your life is because you weren't getting what you wanted out of the situation. And the reason why you weren't getting what you wanted out of the situation is because a lot of these people were looking over you. They underestimated you. They tried to undercut you. They stabbed you, abused you, betrayed you, and kept overlooking you. That's what I kept getting. They kept overlooking you. They kept looking past you. They didn't want to see your value. They didn't want to see your worth. They didn't appreciate what you was bringing to the table. They didn't appreciate your realness. How genuine you were. How raw and uncut you were with them, with, as far as your feelings, as far as what you would do for them. You were a real one. And the thing is, these people kept overlooking you and devalued you. And the way that they did that was they were not treating you the way that you should have been treated as a king and as a queen. And see, the thing is, they were in a position of, you know, what I kept and how it was coming to me is, you guys were just lined up. And a lot of you guys were like, pick me, pick me, pick me. And you had a lot of these people who were just on this path, just looking at you, walking past you, looking at you, walking past you, looking at you, walking past you. And they kept running past you, walking past you, but saw you, but didn't truly see you, right? Because they didn't want to see. At this particular time, these people were blinded. They didn't want to see you for who you truly were and appreciate you for how much value you brought into their life and what you meant to them. See, the thing is, when these people kept running on this path and on this road, God stopped them dead in their tracks and forced these people to turn around and forced these people to look at you. See, he stopped them dead in their tracks and then these people had to turn around and God was like, look at my person. Look at how independent they are. Look at how beautiful they are. Look at how handsome they are. Look at how successful they are. Look at, look at all the things that they accomplish without any help, without any support, without anyone in their corner rooting for them but me. Because I'm all who they needed. And look at how far they got without you. So now these people were forced to look at you, whereas they didn't want to see you. They want to give you the time of day. They didn't want to take a second, a millisecond, just to just view you, just to just look at you and conversate and open up to try to get to know you. They just didn't want to do it until God forced them to see you. And see, now that they were forced to see you and forced to see your value, you got a lot of these people in regret. You got a lot of these people that some are in denial. Some of them are guilty. 
that shame is eating at them. That guilt is eating at them. Because in the midst of them not wanting to see you for who they were, they downgraded. Their life didn't get to the point of which they thought it would be. Thinking that they was just going to go ahead and, and surpass you and be better than you without. And you were the blessing. You were the golden goose. You were the golden ticket. You were the train ride that they needed to get to where they wanted to be. See, this is how God had it set up. Like, how are you going to treat a person when on the outside is not looking the way that you want it to look? The outside may not be up to par, but the inside is everything that you need in a person to get you through this thing that we call life. See, your insides were always right. Your insides was never screwed up, never twisted. You would love these people to your last dying breath. Would have given it away your last. Some of y'all did. Some of y'all, we're not going to speak on it. But when I say last dying breath, I don't know why I'm saying that. Some of y'all, this, this, some of these relationships, when they broke away and, and it put you in a real bad space. God really had to touch you and get you through that. It was really hard for y'all because you were so genuine to these people. You were so loving to these people. You gave your all. But see, a lesson in it is always reserve love for yourself. Always reserve that for yourself. Never give your 100% to a person, especially until you get to really cross your T's, dot your I's, really get to know this person for who they truly are. Even then, I tell you guys, when you spend time trying to get to know a person, you never really know the person. You only know what they choose to show you. They could be living a whole lot for 10, 15 years that you was getting to know them, lying to you, faking it, which is why I also tell you in the midst of it, you also have to keep God in the midst of everything that you do. When you're getting to know a person before you marry a person, when you're in a relationship, before you get engaged, you jumped head first into it. You took a foolish leap. Because that's something for some of y'all, that's how you are. Like, your heart just so pure. You just, when you want something, you go after it. You say, okay, if I be real with the person and they see how real I am, they see how loving I am, they can't help but love me back or at least be real with me too. Not when people are not spiritually balanced. So the thing is, you had to learn a lesson. These people had to learn a lesson. But they learned real quick who you truly were. And for a lot of them, it's too late. Because see, when God stopped them and made them turn around and face you, because it's not right. I tell you all the time, God heard things that you didn't hear. He saw things that you didn't see. He knew how these people were treating you, and you didn't deserve any of it. So the thing is, he stopped them dead in their tracks. People keep running, 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 thinking that they're doing something. Hurting a person that could have taken them to where they wanted to be in life. But now when they look back and they see how God gave you everything that you ever prayed for. Took you to certain heights in your life that these people would never be able to experience. That you never thought you would be able to experience. And now they have to see you in all your glory. It got these people up in their head about how they treated you and how they did you, wishing that they never did that. Because they know it's too late. They ran too far. Where God stopped them at, they were, they were so far gone. It ain't no waiting for them to come back and walk all the way back to you or run all the way back to you. That's how far gone these people were. Out of your life. When someone leave out your life, let them stay there. But God is saying they kept overlooking you. Kept under, underestimating you. Kept trying to undercut you. Kept trying to stab you. Just do wrong to you for no apparent reason. They didn't have to do that. And see, their lesson in your justice is God stopping them dead in their tracks. And making them turn around. And see you in all your success. And see you in all your winnings. See you elevate. See you progress. See you win in life. And knowing that they'll never be able to be a part of it. Because they didn't want to recognize your value and your worth while they had you in their life. They didn't want to respect you. But you understand now why you had to go through that. 
and you know your value now and you know your worth now and you realize you're never going to settle again for some of these friendships that you had in your life, some of these situationships, relationships that you had in your life. You choose your peace over everything now because some of these situations almost took you out to the point of no return. So now you know how to move moving forward when you get to know someone and before you allow them into your life. The like God is telling you, never mind these people who tried to overlook you, never mind the people who underestimated you, never mind the people who tried to kick you and beat you while you were down because all these people were forced to, at the end of the day, recognize you in the end. All that running that they did just to be stopped in their tracks and recognize you for who they, who you were. Recognize who you were the whole time. See you for who you are in your glory, in your shining. Why you, why you blowing up? Why you successful? Why you winning? They were forced and are forced to see all of that. You're blessed. You're divinely favored and you highly protected. And I want you to understand that if you need a friend, you got it in me. If you need love, you got it in me. If you need inspiration, motivation, a life example, you know that you got it in me. I come with that real, I come with that fake. I'm your sister, I'm your confidant. I'm that shoulder that you can lean on, that you can cry on. I'm that listening ear that you can vent to. I'm your sister and I'm your friend for life. We ride together, we slide together. JC game for life. And until next time, stay prayed up and be blessed. I love y'all. As, as as people, we are intermediaries between ourselves and our blessing. Let's leave you an example. In the scripture, the nation of Israel had the promise, right? They God blessed them with Moses. God sent them the prophet Moses to free them from bondage. He gave them miracles. He gave them after miracle, after the Red Sea. Not the ten plagues. Pharaoh freed and allowed them to go free. He gave them food in the wilderness, manna in the wilderness, the ten commandments. He gave them everything that he knew that they needed and they prayed for. And they still wouldn't But they listen. grumbled and they complained. They were ungrateful. He said they wouldn't do nothing even they wouldn't do the war. And so this was look at this as the promise. Right. This bowl is the promise. This this thing is the nation of Israel. Here's the promised land. Here's the nation of Israel. Now, it's right there. All they got to do is touch it. But you know what God made them do? For 40 years, he made them walk around the promise. Around like the this. elbow to get to their thumb. It was right there. They could look at it. They could see it. They could smell it. They could touch it. But they couldn't enter into it because of one thing. Their spirit was not in tune with God. With the epic wheel. With the epic and wheel. with the persons that he sent to lead them. Mm -hmm. So they kept going doing this. And during the four, and, and, and slowly, God killed the nation of Israel and dwindled them down to an elite number. So when they first entered into the wilderness, there was well over probably a billion of them. But by the time they actually, Moses died, and Joshua actually brought them into the promised land, there was only a hundred of them. Think about that. A billion people dwindled down to a hundred people over 40 years because of, because of one thing. Because of their spirit, the spirit was not connected yeah, it was with not the promise God. of God right. and with, their, with the person that they sent. I don't care if it's a sheep. I don't care if it's a person. I don't care if it's uncle. I don't care if it's a child. God said in the scripture, a child shall lead them. Why is it that why is it that a baby can say something so profound at three years old? And we've been going, how did you learn that? It's what did you hear that from? Because it's, it's not the about spirit. The, it's the spirit. It's the spirit. It's the spirit. And, and that's and that's the first we don't we fail to realize that. Yeah. As black people, understand something. Our his forefathers. His parents, my parents, those who lived in the early 60s and 50s and experienced the segregation, the the the, the hoses, witnessed the, the marches, oh, right. the marches on Washington and the assassinations of public leaders. They witnessed this and they fought and they bled and they died 
for our generation, fast forward to our generation now, to be able to have the privileges like going to college, getting our education, making being successful in society, making money for ourselves, all those things, they fought and bled and died for us. But yet we will sit here and say, the white man did this, and the white man is doing that, and the white man is oppressing us, the white man is not doing anything but focusing on himself and sitting back saying, we're not doing anything to you. You are oppressing your own people. You are oppressing your own people. You will sit there and be mad at me because God has blessed me because I have worked hard and prayed and fought for this, for this blessing that God gave me, which is for me. That you're going to be mad at me because I'm successful, not because I sold drugs, not because I did anything else, but because I worked hard. I made the sacrifices, and as I said before, I was willing to suffer and sacrifice hardships, desperation, separation, uh, frustration, to get to the goal that I had in mind and that God had for me. But so you're going to be mad at me. But you were willing but to But you listen. can get the same blessing, though. That's right. It's available to you. God is sitting there saying, it's here. Yeah. It's, it, listen it, to that here's still the small promise. voice. Here's the promise. It's right here. Here's the plate. It's all for you, but all you got to do is what? Pay attention to that pay voice attention within. To it and take it. <laughs> pay but attention to thing. that voice in that The heart. question is, do you want all the grace and the blessing, or do you want some? Do you want all the pie? I like sweet potato pie. I don't know about y'all. I love sweet potato pie. You make me a sweet potato pie right now and say, it's for me. I want the whole pie. Let me tell you something. If I get my pie and there's a piece missing, that's not a whole pie. I want the whole pie. Give, give me all the pie. I want it all. Not a little bit, but I want it all. And I'm willing to do what it takes to get to that pot. To, to, to what's for me. That's my bottom line, y'all. Fight for what's for you. Do it. Protest. Do all the things that we need to do that we're doing right now for equal rights and all the things for that. But understand something. In all the fighting and in all the things that we're doing, there still comes back to one thing. We still have to maintain ourselves and our work together individually and not be selfish in the sense that not being negative at another person's blessing, but rejoice. We should rejoice in somebody else's success. I'm not going to be mad at uncle because uncle is successful because he's got a nice car or a nice home or a nice whatever, nice relationship, money. Because guess what? I don't know what he went through to get to that point. And if he tells me, look, I didn't earn this because of my good looks. I didn't oh, earn God. this because of this, that, and third. I earned it because I bled, I sweat, and I've sacrificed mm -hmm. to get to this point. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm blessed today. Because So therefore, rejoice in his blessing. Because guess what? The same blessing that, that, that God's given uncle is the same blessing that God's waiting really to give you. But then guess what? You have to be willing to go through what and do whatever it takes to get to the promise. Because it's there. It's waiting. It's right there wrapped up in a pretty little bow for you. All you got to do is thank you, Lord. And then once you get it, be grateful for it. Be receive, grateful receive, for it. Don't complain. Don't be like, oh, Oh, that job is just so hard. Be grateful that you got a job. Because guess what? There's some people out there that wish they had a job to wash dishes. Or be a dishwasher. Or take out trash. Or do any of those things. So be grateful for what God gave you. Because God is doing it for a reason. He wants to give you... You can't be... In the scripture it says, you got to be grateful for the little things before you can be grateful for the blessing of the bigger things. You can't say, I want to be rich. You can't be rich. You can't have money. You, you can't be successful. Rich. You were born, you were bred to be that successful. But guess what? There is an earning that you have to do. There are sacrifices that you got to make. There's people that you got to cut off. And that's the question. Are you willing to cut off the girlfriend, the boyfriend, the best friend, the boy, the homie, the girlfriend, mom, dad? Sister, brother, are you willing to do that to get to what God has for you? Because sometimes you got to come out of your comfort zone 
God's going to put you in a place where you are unfamiliar with in a surrounding that you have no one there to back you up. Because you want to know something? He wants to bless you because he wants to see what are you going to do. What is it that you're going to do? Are you going to take what's yours and be grateful for it? Or are you going to not be grateful for what it is that you have? Be blessed. Be grateful. Be happy. Because guess what? The promise is there. It's right here waiting for you. You just got to take it. You got to receive it. You got to be grateful for it. And then what And then what you do in the end also too, in closing, is give back. Don't hog the blessing for yourself. Give back to someone. Give back. Give, that. give what you've learned, what you've obtained, what you've been blessed with, and give back so that someone else can get to where you are. Be blessed. Because guess what? It's there for you. Is this all you got to do is just take it. It's right there. You know? Be happy, be blessed, and guess what? Love you some you, love you some me, love you some everybody else, and guess what? Be grateful, because guess what? God's got something good for you. He's got something good for me. You just gotta be taking it in grace. That's all. It's simple. We make life hard, y'all. We're making life hard. We're making life easy. We can get out of a lot of situations if we just stop making life so hard. Why? Be happy. The energy that you take in being negative and being mad, being pissed off about everything about life, Man, you can use that same energy and guess shit. what? And get, take that same energy and put it towards something positive for yourself, for your community, for your brother and your sister, your friend, your girlfriend, your wife, husband, whatever. Do it for yourself because guess what? When you do it for when you can do when you can take a negative situation, a positive, a negative, when you can take a negative vibe and make it into a positive, when you can take a room that is negative, and when you enter into that room, you can change it, woo, you know that you, you know that the light that is with you. You know you got that power. You know you got that grace that God gives right. all of us right. to be able to change the situation and take it a positive into a negative. God said it in his word. He will make your enemies your what? Your footstool. Your footstool. He will prepare Just like table. poor uncle's got his leg messed up, and he got to put it up like this. God gives us the, the mechanisms to be able to rest right. on here. Think about that. I'm not trying to be deep. I'm just trying to be real with you. You can either take it or you can leave. Like Unc said, like Unc said, it's there for you. You, you got to want it. You got to believe in it. That's right. This man right here sitting next to me, this man has wisdom and knowledge, y'all. I know you guys watch your YouTube. Support his YouTube. Well, but Look nephew YouTube. come by and he gonna pick everything he can out of my head. Exactly. He gonna try I'm gonna get, fuck it. He gonna try. He gonna get it all. I'm gonna absorb like a sponge. He gonna like get a sponge. It. He gonna get it <laughs> like a sponge. And like he say, if you know me, you better get some of it. Yeah, get some of it. Listen, pick this man up. Support this man on his YouTube. You you are listening to it. You subscribe to it. But don't be just a subscriber. Be a doer. Listen. Text this man. Hit this man up. Ask him questions. Right. Th these YouTube channels, TikToks, things that we make, they're all blessings. And they can all be used for the greater good of yeah, everything sure. else. But use it for the right reasons. Right. It means it to reach out and touch someone else and bring someone else in that might be having depression. That's you right. don't know what you can be doing. What you're well, we using. It can be something silly. It can be something. Exactly. Ask all, all, all those things. You can, you can change a person's life by just a smile, a kind word, and even if you just say, I love you, and, it's, and take it off there. For five seconds, I love y'all. Yeah. That's it. It don't got to be nothing beautiful for a boy. I just want to say I love everybody. That's right. And that I'm, I'm, I'm praying for everybody and be safe. I tell Kobe, that's his gift every day. I tell him. I say, Kobe, what's your gift? That's their gift to smile. <laughs> that's smile. That's smile. That's smile. Don't that's try to hide smile. Don't 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 you know, that heals the heart when you can make everybody smile. There you go. We came to y'all in love. We leave y'all in peace. We out. <laughs> peace. Infinite waters diving deep once again. We are here 
Stay single until you meet someone like this. This is sexology. Water, fire, hot, cold, yin, yang. We're back. Daddy's home. Deep divers, are you still waiting for the one, that person who is gonna sweep you off your feet? Let's just, woo, breathing in that good ass prana, baby. We got a whole lot to talk about. We ain't even had breakfast yet. Can I get a hello? <laughs> Stay single until you meet someone like this. Like what, Ralph? Stay single until you meet someone that respects you. That respects you not only when they're in your presence, but also when they leave you, when they're away from you. A lot of people sometimes write to me about someone they're with, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> the kind of stuff you're telling me, right? So respecting someone is not only when you're around them, but also when you're not. Like, are you still being faithful to them? Are you still respecting them, who they are, what they stand for, right? Sometimes you might be with someone and they just don't respect you at all. Stay single until you meet someone who actually respects you. They treat you like a king, they treat you like a queen, and they even bring you breakfast in bed. Mm. Slow motion this side. Mm. Stay single until you meet someone who is there, not only in the good times, but also in the really, really bad times. Like the time so bad, not even the cat down the road is around. The time so bad, you're like, oh my gosh, I just need someone right now. And they're there. Many times, some people are only around when the party is on. When the music stops, where did everyone go? Well. Stay single until you meet someone who's gonna be there when the music stops, right? Who's gonna actually help you clear up? Cause look at the place, it's a mess, right? They're gonna help you put away the chairs, right? You don't want someone who's just gonna scoot off. No, that's not gonna be good, right? So find someone who is gonna be your ride or die. Until then, stay single. Some people are only there when everything is rosy, but they don't want to know about your bad days. Well, stay single until you find someone who actually does. Stay single until you meet someone who loves your heart as much as your backside. Mm. Slow motion this side. Ladies, a lot of ladies writing to me. He loves me, Ralph. Maybe he does. That's beautiful. But stay single until you find someone who loves your heart as much as your beautiful body. You see, when we talk of sexology, that is the water relationship where someone would even love you if you've got a blindfold on. Like, I can't see you right now, but I feel you and you feel so good. Like velvet, oh my gosh, right? It's so easy to fall in love without a shell, but we aren't only this outer shell. Yes, it's a part of who we are, but it's not the totality of who we are. So stay single until you meet someone who loves the inner you as much as the beautiful outer you, because you look so good. And we ain't even had breakfast yet, but we're about to. <laughs> Stay single until you meet someone who gets excited to go out to lunch with you. And you also get excited because both of you can just talk about the cosmos and different planets and now the food is getting cold, right? 
stay single until you actually get excited <laughs> to go out with someone to eat, right? Many times, let's face it, we're around people. And if you're in a relationship with someone, you gotta be eating with them a lot. And sometimes you can't be bothered. No, no, no. You never wanna be in that situation. You wanna absolutely love lunchtime. Seven day vegan challenge, like you get excited to say, okay, what are we gonna eat right now? Got the papaya, got the guavas, got the dates, got the brown rice, got the quinoa, got the avocados, got everything you need. Got the E3 live. You get excited about lunchtime. But until you don't, stay single. Because lunchtime eating should just be as good as lovemaking. Who agrees? Put your hand up. Me and the cat on the road. Okay, that's good. Food is everything. Stay single until you get excited to eat with someone. Stay single until you meet someone who helps you evolve mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Mm. Slow motion this side. Mm. You see, time and time again, we meet people who don't help us evolve. In fact, they make it far worse for us, right? They actually prevent us from evolving. So stay single until you actually find someone who is invested in your evolution. They want to see you become better at everything you do. They are supporting you in your mission. They're right there. Where else? Right there. Oh my gosh, they are, right? They're supporting you every single step of the way. Your happiness is their happiness. <laughs> Your sadness is also their sadness. Stay single until you meet someone who puts your massive ego in check. Let's be honest. Sometimes we're around people, we've even been in relationships with people, right? Where you're not 100% honest in terms of what they're really like because you just want to be with them. No, no. That's not the water relationship. Water relationship is where you can be with someone and they will check your ass. They will say like, look, your ego is massive. Shrink it right now. Or your behavior, gosh, what's happening to you? You want someone that's gonna check you, sometimes gonna put you in your place and say, just take a seat. You don't want a yes person all the time. Stay single until you meet someone who can really ego check you sometimes. Stay single until you meet someone who accepts your flaws, accepts you 100%. They accept everything about you. The mole on your backside, everything about you. Sometimes you trip up for no reason. Everything about you. you even snore sometimes. Everything about you. <laughs> That's very hard to find. Why is it so hard to find? Because many times people love based on conditions. But we are all so... multi-dimensional. <laughs> we are all so deep. We have many sides to us. Stay single until you meet someone who accepts all the sides of you. Mm. Slow motion this side. Mm. Not just one side, but all the sides. Your crazy side, your weird side, your fun side, your sexy side, your smart side. You catch my drift. Stay single until you meet someone who is willing to meet you halfway, who is willing to put in that effort, who is willing to be committed to you in some kind of way. A lot of people write to me saying, Ralph, 
It's always me doing all the work. Why? Better run. That way. <laughs> What's helped me along my journey is to realize this. Relationships are all about effort. Are all about commitment. Are all about meeting each other halfway. Everybody has something to offer. So, so stay single until you actually meet someone who is willing to meet you halfway. You see, many people don't have time in society because once again, many people are so busy doing nothing. I know. <laughs> A lot of women write to me saying, Ralph, why doesn't he have any time for me? I will tell you this. It's what I call men of purpose, women of purpose. Until someone has actualized their dream, they ain't going to have time for you. Ladies, you want to meet a man who is already fulfilling his dream or has already fulfilled a major dream. Because until then, his focus is going to be on his dream because he's going to feel like, oh my gosh, I haven't made anything of myself. I'm telling you right now. So a lot of the times you might meet a guy, ladies, and some of his attention is on you, but then some of his attention is on, actually, I've got to start this business i gotta work and that's how people start to separate so once again stay single until you meet someone who is ready to give you time and attention and i always say that can only really happen when people are really self-actualizing when they're living their dream doing what makes them happy then they have more to give to you until then just chill out with the cat down the road just chill out with the cat down the road right stay single until you meet someone who enjoys your silence as much as they enjoy your words Slow motion this side. Ever been around someone who's just talking and talking and talking? And then they stop and you're like, I feel really awkward. You see, the water relationship is where you can enjoy their silence just as much as their words. You feel comfortable. You feel at peace just when both of you are looking at each other in total silence. Sometimes it feels just as good as when they're saying, baby, you're so beautiful, right? Isn't that what we all want? Where we can live in a world where we can enjoy people's silence as much as their words? Surely. Stay single until you meet someone who gets you out of bed just by thinking of them. Oh yes, can I get a hello? <laughs> you are the reason why I wake up today. Stay single until you meet someone like that. And I found it, even when I was a teenager, I found it. And that's what we all should be striving for. Someone who can actually motivate us by just thinking of them. You see, if you are thinking about someone and it doesn't feel so good, they're actually keeping you in bed a lot longer because you're like, oh my gosh. You want someone who's going to get your ass out of bed, right? They're going to inspire you to live more, to feel more alive. That's what you want. Stay single until you meet someone who is ready to be vulnerable with you. That's right. They're ready to really go deep with you. They're ready to become, they're ready to become intimate with you. They're ready to start exposing themselves because let's face it, a lot of us, we try to appear squeaky clean. The whole goal of the water relationship is to break down the barriers people have put up which is really part of the ego. It's part of their ego, right? The love connection is all about breaking down those barriers until you see the naked them. Slow motion this side. 
Stay single until you meet someone who will tell you what they really feel sometimes, who is not ashamed of sometimes showing their emotional side. Ladies, you want a soft guy. Why? Because if a guy can open up to you, it means the relationship is going to have a lot more trust, more honesty, a better communication. What spoils relationships is a lack of communication. People don't communicate because they feel afraid. People don't communicate because they feel scared. People don't communicate because they feel they are going to be judged. Are you listening to the words coming out of my mouth? No? Okay. That's okay. <laughs> so, you want someone who's really going to get intimate with you. They're going to tell you stuff. Stay single until you meet someone who is ready to be vulnerable with you. Because when someone is vulnerable with you, it means they really love you. And when you're vulnerable with them, it means you really love them. And then both of you will be like this. And then you'll just say, Feel so good to be alive, baby. Can I get a hello? Have a beautiful day. Stay single until you meet someone like this. We're just... Woo! Breathing in that good-ass prana, baby. We're out here. We're out here in this beautiful art gallery. Have a beautiful day. Infinite waters. Diving deep once again. Stay well. Stay healthy. Peace. You! <laughs>
cornices. He turned water into wine. Boy, oh boy, and I ain't gonna tell you what he did to Mary Magdalene. Because y'all think the Bible was a, a Mr. Goody Two Shoes story, but I dare anybody to read it from cover to cover. When you read it from cover to cover, you will discover things like no other. See, and when he was in that den, in that trap house, the disciples walked in on him. Said, damn, master. We expected you to be holier than now. And better than that. He said, man, let me tell you something. I keep it 100. I ain't going to sugarcoat shit for nobody. He said, you see me in here doing my third thistle. But am I not about my father's work? My father told me to come as I am. And I came the way I am. And I came up right independent and fearless. Because <laughs> he said, when well, each one, reach one, we can teach one. <coughs> it's only certain people you can reach. <coughs> it is certain people I can reach. But what is you reaching out for? You gotta ask yourself that. Is you reaching out for love, justice? I see a lot of people out here getting high off cocaine, heroin, and everything to try to escape the madness that this motherfucking world is putting upon us. We got to have something to go with. Everybody got some type of habit. Everybody got something. They got to have to cope with this goddamn bullshit that's going on around us. This motherfucking life we had didn't come with a menu. It didn't come with instructions. But we had to instruct one another. And each one teach one as we reach one and uplift one. One thing I refuse to do is sit here and talk to you and sugarcoat what the fuck I do. I'm not going to sit here and run a church and tell you I'm holier than thou and then I'm fucking over my wife, I'm using drugs, I'm doing everything else behind your back. I ain't got nothing to slide, I ain't got nothing to hide. J.C. Kane, back me up for life. Victoria, where you at, baby? When we say each one reach one, we teach one, we coming as we are. We coming as the men and women we are, upright, independent, and fearless. When God came and talked to me, I had a blunt in my hand. And I probably had a, you ain't you boy, do you better let me keep it clean. I had a blunt in my hand and two women sitting on my lap. Making they booty clap. And God said, you the one I need. He said, because you're going to reach them ones. The asshole slappers and the booty clappers. The ones that wanna, don't want to hear the word asshole slapping and booty clapping, y'all know what to do. In this video right now. The ones that want to hear that booty clapping and that ass slapping and this message is out to reach you, like, share, and subscribe. Because this is for the real ones that want to stay alive. We reach an eternal life and eternal happiness. And I don't know what the fuck happened to me. But something got into me through the trials and tribulations that I have been through. And if you know me, you know the shit I've been through. How many motherfuckers out there know me and know me well? How many people met me in jail? How many met me when I was raising hell? How many met me when I was doing swell? And how many met me? <sighs> yeah. Mm -hmm, when they were smelling that real prana, getting their life together. You know, that's clever. Because a lot of people met me then. And I give it up to the people that met me then. All of you that met me then, I honor every last one of y'all that have came to me with your problems. Upright, independent, and fearless. Thanks for sharing. Because that let me know that I'm not the only one caring in this world. That we all can care about each other. And we are going to rise to our highest state of consciousness by any means necessary. 
Martin Luther King had a dream. He had a badass dream. And you know why I said that dream was bad? Because I saw myself in it. And I said, by any means necessary, I wish I could be a part of that dream. And that dream became a part of me. You see, my dream is to see everybody, I don't care what color, race, creed you are, to live in this world in peace and harmony. Black, white, Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Chinese, I don't care who you are, get on your knees and pray every day. Stand up right independent and pray, I don't care how you pray, but just pray for better days to come ahead. Because when them better days come, that's for us, that's for the future. I mean, you think about your children, your grandchildren, and all, all that has been given to you in abundance. What do you cherish? Do you cherish the things that have been given to you in abundance? Like, for instance, the day you was born, and they counted that you had ten toes and ten fingers, and everything was in place. I give honors to all of those who were born without it. And who stood upright, independent within themselves to be the person that they are. Because I know a guy that was born with no arms and no legs. And you talk about the problems that you had. You better raise your thoughts to infinite wisdom to see the omnipotence of God displayed before you. I complained about my feet. Until I seen a man that didn't have no shoes And I complained about my shoes Until I seen a man that didn't have no feet So stop complaining Half the people don't care And the other half glad as you Stand up within yourself And be who you are Upright, independent, and fearless Stand the men and women you are To generate unconditional love To one another Remember, we came to this world butt, booty, asshole, naked. It's time to take them polished coats off and stop sugarcoating that bullshit you trying to hide behind because of your friends, families, the organization you associate yourself with. That you got to be Miss Percy or Mr. I'm so goody two shoe. Fuck all that shit. Use a fake. Keep it 100. And if people can't understand your truth, can't stand on your truth, and can't be the truth, then you don't need them around you. Because all you need to do is stand up, right, independent on the truth. And be the person that you truly are. And the person that you were destined to be. Remember, God created every man, woman, and child with one fingerprint and one mind and one design of their own. And you were created in this world to do one thing. And that's something that no man, woman, or child has ever done before. I came to y'all in love. I leave y'all in peace. Have a blessed day. I'm out. Like, share, and subscribe. Hello, my divine kings and queens. I'm back to do another video. In today's message, what we're going to be going over is God is telling you that your friends turn to foes. That the reason why you accumulated all of these enemies and haters and adversaries, right, is because of the way that God started blessing you, right? <clears throat> God is saying that these people turned into an enemy once he started blessing you. <clears throat> and the reason for that is because God was showing you, right? God was showing you and prepping things up in your life, right? To prepare you for the next stage of your life that he was going to take you to. And see, the thing is, a lot of the times you will have people that surround you that are secret enemies, which is the worst kind of enemies to have, right? Because these are the people who you can't really determine um, <clears throat> what's their standing in your life, right? You don't know how they're moving. You can't really pinpoint their next moves because they're a secret enemy. 
So you had a lot of these people, right, that weren't on the same level as you, weren't achieving the same things as you, weren't being blessed like you were. You had these people that were around you that claimed to be your friend, that claimed to be a lover of yours, that claimed to have your back, and then these people turned into a straight enemy, be it they backed up from you, be it they started talking bad on you, down on your name, be it that they just started alienating you, judging you for whatever the reason, they turned into an enemy because God was blessing you continuously, tremendously out of this world. And see, the thing is, one thing about it, you, no matter how many people go against you, it's not going to stop, detour, hinder, right? Or stagnate your position in life, the position that God is prepping you for. It's not going to block any of the blessings that God had already um, predestined to bring into your life. You get me what I'm saying? Nothing that these people do, nothing that they did. It's just that in God exposing them to you, it prevented any other harm from coming your way, right? It prevented any complications. It prevented any any troubles that may come your way at the hands of these people. You get me? And one thing about it, one thing about it, be glad that these people exited out of your life. Be glad that God exposed them to you. Because at the end of the day, be glad also that these people chose to back up from you. Be glad that they chose to bless you with their absence instead of cursing you with their presence. JC, back me up. GPR, you with me. You already know what to do. If any of these messages resonate with you, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And tell a friend to tell a friend to join the JC gang. Reach one, teach one. We ride together. We slide together. JC gang for life. Be glad that these people chose to stop being your friend, chose to stop keeping it real with you, chose to back up from you, chose to turn into an enemy. Be glad that these people bless you with their absence instead of cursing you with their presence. Because let me tell you something, what was going to happen? God was going to keep blessing you. God was going to keep elevating you. You was going to keep being abundant, keep being prosperous. And then these people was going to keep circling around you, being in your life, seeing what was coming your way, seeing what's not coming their way. And you know what was going to happen? Because they came into this with a black heart. They came into this with jealousy and with envy. They came in this with with malice with with ill intent that was just gonna grow it wasn't gonna go nowhere because you had them in your entourage because you had them in your life because you was blessing them because you you was humble that wasn't gonna go nowhere because these people were imbalanced they were imbalanced and see the thing is what that was gonna do as it grow as it grow as it grow that's when people's minds start thinking and thinking and plotting and conniving and trying to see what they can do to cook up some plan to go against you or to extort you. I'm trying to tell you something to take from you, to deplete you, to hinder you, to block you, to sabotage you. See, it, it, you don't have to worry about any of it because God's saying nothing that they do, nothing, and, and nothing, nothing, nothing. No matter how many enemies go against you, it was not going to stop your blessings. God was just trying to bless you with just peace so you wouldn't even have to worry about it. Be glad that it happened when it happened. Be glad that these people got out your life, exposed themselves when they did. Because the only reason why they turn that way is because of the way that God was blessing you, baby. People like to be around people and gather around and flock when a person doing bad so they can look like they got this fake hero syndrome. Like, oh, I'm the best friend of the year because I was there and I was doing this and I was that, but it was all fake. They, they masked how... They were just happy at the fact that you was going through these pitfalls, these downfalls in your life. They was happy. They wanted you to glorify them for their fakeness. Wanted you to glorify them for being fake. Because they was trying to mask how deep-rooted the hate was, the jealousy was. Because they knew they didn't have no reason to be that way towards you. A lot of the times, you know what I'm saying, you have people around you that, that see things in your life and they want that. And then they try to attain that in the worst way, in the wrong way, by going against you and being an enemy. That's why all of these friends turned into foes. Broke up relationships. Got with people. 
that you knew that you was loving behind your back or after the fact. Tried to come up with ways to fraud you, to take from you, when all you was doing was ever sh was showing these people love and coming real. Some of y'all question yourselves like, dang, what's wrong with me? Like, I don't understand. Like, this is getting too hard. This journey is getting too hard because the more I get deep, deep, deep into my spiritual journey, the more people alienate themselves from me. The more that I feel that I am alone in doing this. You get me what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? You got to ask God for forgiveness for even allowing that to be a thought that crossed your mind. Because I tell you all the time, like, with this come great responsibility, but it's also come with great blessings as well. Because that man got to reward you for doing something that the masses won't do or won't find easy to do. That's why you lost people. They were never supposed to be in your life what was never yours to begin with. They was never loyal from the jump. It just seemed that way because of history, because of time. But bit by bit, piece by piece, things started to unfold. And as things started to unfold and unravel, and things started to progress and elevate for you or maybe decrease from these people or maybe nothing was nothing bad was happening to these people maybe they was doing good too but they just didn't want to see you do good but as soon as it started happening that's it became a problem they didn't want you to be great it could they couldn't let you be great couldn't let you be the smart one couldn't let you be the pretty one couldn't let you be the successful one couldn't let you be the one that you get what i'm saying grabs people attention you got a lot of people who um carry that spirit they they carry that spirit and you feel me like it's like they pride and their ego get in the way of what's real what's genuine what's the right way of doing things you get what i'm saying got a lot of people who was around you that that just wanted co to compete with you so bad wanted to follow behind your footsteps so they could be glorified and looked as as doing something better or being better instead of just following on their own path but at the end of the day you know what i'm saying God say, God say that these people turned into an enemy as soon as he started to overflow and overfill your life with all these blessings. As soon as he started to bless you, that's when these people became a straight enemy. And the more and more he started to bless you, the more and more enemies started to unravel in your life. See, a lot of people didn't want to be around you because to be around you is a direct reflection back on what they're not doing in their life, what they haven't achieved in their life. And it's not like at the end of the day, you weren't humble with it. But God's saying, man, never mind these people who wanted to exit out of your life, who didn't want to do you right. Because he enabled you and blessed you and put you in a position to surpass all these people. And you handle them with style and grace. You ain't rubbing nothing up in nobody's face. But God said, if you need to stand 10 toes down and go ahead and stun on him, you can. But you ain't going to do it. Because he told you and you promised him that you would remain humble. And because of your obedience, because of every situation you was placed in and how you handle it, that's why God is going to keep blessing you. This was, see, people don't even understand, man, like, it ain't no recipe. It ain't no special ingredient. You're just... Being you, your real, true, authentic self. You treat others as you want to be treated. You, 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 you are the change that you want to see in others. You are an example. You are a leader. That's what people don't understand. You treat people with the same respect as you yourself want to receive in return. You don't sit up here and try to go against people. You don't sit up here and be sneaky and fake and phony. As a lot of people that was in your life, that exited out of your life, were. So at the end of the day, man, be glad that these people blessed you with their absence instead of cursing you with their presence. Because let me tell you something, they were secret enemies anyway. And the mask came off, clean off. Because the blessings kept coming in your life. You kept being blessed. You kept being elevated. Things kept progressing in your life. You get me what I'm saying? And it's going to continuously be that way. But at the end of the day, I just want you to know that if you need a friend, you got it in me. If you need inspiration, motivation, 
You got it in me. If you need a life example, you got it in me. I'm your sister. I'm that confidant. I'm that shoulder that you can lean on, that you can cry on. I'm, I'm that listening ear that you can vent to. I keep it real with you. I come with that real. I don't come with that fake. I keep it 100. I keep it a buck with you, man. I'm going to tell you what it is, and I'm going to tell you what it's not. Let these people go and release that. It was never nothing wrong with you. It was always something to these people. Never mind who they cool with. Never mind who they roll with, who they support. Treat people accordingly based on how they treat you. That's all you got to do. They show you that they are enemy, let them stay there. It ain't for you to, to, you know what I'm saying, pitch your case. It ain't for you to sit up here and state your claim and try to get people to, to look at you a different type of way or try to get people to listen, let it go. Because the reason why is something that you can't control. You can't control the amount of blessings that's coming in your life and on the level that it's coming in. And that's the, the level that it's coming on. You can't control that. Likewise, you ain't going to be able to control these people, how they receive it and how they take it and how they treat you. So you need to take that, understand that, receive that, and thank God that he blessed you. Thank God that he turned your life around. Because you're going to have the right people come in your life, man. You're going to have the right people come in your life that's going to do you right. That's going to genuinely be a good friend to you. That's going to genuinely, everything that's going to come into place with your relationships. I speak that over your life. Because you good people, man. So you deserve a good person. You didn't deserve these fake people. That's all God was trying to show you. You deserve somebody that's just real and going to keep it 100 and come the same way that you coming. So don't fret. Don't be sad. Just back up. Move forward. Understand. Realize it. It's cool. And then the right people that's going to need to be in your life is going to come in your life. Period, point blank. And until next time, man, I want y'all to stay prayed up and I want y'all to be blessed. I love y'all.